Hi, welcome to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thanking you once again for taking the time to observe this video. Again, I want to thank all of you that do view these videos and respond to my videos. It is greatly and with a heartfelt thank you that you do so. Today, we're going to look at the great delusion slash lie from God to those left behind. It's something that it's not looked at a lot, has not been taught on a lot. I don't see a lot of it in videos or on teaching presentations. And um, it's a very important aspect that both the saved and the lost should know about. It's very good news to the saved, but not good news to the lost. Now let's look in scripture to see where this verse is that corresponds with today's lesson. If you look in the book of 2 Thessalonians, ladies and gentlemen, open your Bibles to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to give you the verse, it's verse 11, and it states, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. Now we're going to look at a little bit more of this to make sure that you have from a biblical understanding and from scripture what is really being talked about here. This has to do with those that have lived in the age of grace, this dispensation of the grace of God from the cross, death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ up until something called the rapture or the being caught up of the body of Christ out of this earth. Now, a lot of people don't believe this. A lot of people will denounce these teachings from Scripture now uh, and try to rationalize and explain them away by misteaching or a false teaching in using wrong doctrine. And I've heard a lot of people how they go about doing this. And if you're a student of the Word of God, it's very easy to see that they're teaching it wrong. There's even been books written about denouncing such things as the rapture. There's been books out, there is movements out there, there is denominations out there that tell you there's no such thing. Everybody's going to be going through the Great Tribulation. They denounce the rapture, they denounce being caught up, they denounce the revelation of the mystery. They claim there's only one gospel and it's formed from Matthew all the way through to Revelation, it's all the same thing. That's what they teach. That's what they preach. You'll find that in the majority of your local denomination, your non-denominations, your Christian and religious organizations. Very few people will recognize or believe by faith and faith alone on the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. That is where this is found. That is where this statement is found, ladies and gentlemen. It is found after the cross. Very important to understand as to what God says, where he says it, when he says it, and to whom he says it to. This is, comes from Paul. This comes from the one that Jesus Christ chose to send to the Gentiles and to reveal the revelation of the mystery. And there's something in here called the great lie or the great delusion that they will believe a lie. And let's just read, starting, we'll start in verse uh, 9 here and read on through a couple of verses. Of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in verse 9, Paul writes, Even him, and he's referring to the beast in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. In verse 10, And with all deceivableness, of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth 
that they might be saved. And verse 11, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Verse 12, for they all might be damned that who believeth not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, let's look at a few things here to establish what he's talking about, the love of the truth. Well, the love of the truth, truth comes in Scripture some 243 times, 118 times in the New Testament, 116 times in the Old Testament. Now, in the New Testament, the word truth, I don't have it up with me right now, I apologize, but in the Greek, it just means the truth, nothing else. So this word of truth now, see, he says the love of the truth. Now, we have to look at the word truth in the scope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace of God, the revelation of the mystery to understand it. There is truth in the word of God, which means the truth of the Bible. This truth here is a specific truth within, within a specific dispensation. A specific time, if you will, how God is dealing with mankind called the age of grace. This truth can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15, where God says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then you can go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 1, verse 13, gives you the definition of, of the word of truth. Chapter 1, verse 13. It says, In whom ye also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that, ye believed, and ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So the truth we're talking about here that they decided not to believe in is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, this is according to God's word. God just showed you the word of truth. He gave you the definition of the word of truth. It is the gospel of your salvation. So these people that are left behind will have a great lie they're going to believe because God's going to give them over to a strong delusion because they refuse. Now we know what they refuse. They refuse the gospel of Jesus Christ. They refuse the revelation of the mystery. They refuse the teachings of Paul, the apostle from Romans to Philemon, which contained the doctrine for the body of Christ. That is what these people have refused to believe. And you can read all the way through the 49 times the word truth comes up from Romans to Philemon of how they've erred from the truth. They refuse to believe the truth. And all from Romans to Philemon, the word truth means exactly the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of truth, wherever it appears from Romans to Philemon, talks about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, with that being understood from Scripture now, verse 10, let's repeat verse 10 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, why? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. The love of the truth here we're talking about is the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save them for the salvation. And that's found in 1, Tim, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That is the gospel of the truth of God pertaining to Jesus Christ for what he did for you at the cross. That's something you believe on by faith and faith alone and no works. Now it's all spiritual. Very important to bring that into play now because we're going to look at the great delusion that God is going to give over. It's in scripture. When I first started thinking about this study, I was not so sure about the delusion God was going to send. But the more I studied it, the more I looked at scripture, the more clear to me it came. And I will share that with you. He's going to have these people believe a lie. How easy is it going to be for these people to believe the lie? 
might be a good question to ask yourself. It's going to be very easy, and here's the reasons why. Since the cross of Jesus Christ, since his death, burial, and resurrection, and ascension to heaven, man has stepped in and has been teaching supposedly the word of God according to what man thinks it says. Man has twisted, perverted the word of God, mixing law and grace since the beginning. After the cross now we're talking about. They teach in, come on, let's be honest, the denominations of this world, the non-denominations of this world, the religious and Christian organizations of this world called churches of this world, teach and they mix law and grace. They teach Matthew through the book of Revelation. It's all for you and to you for your salvation and your doctrine as to how you should live. You should follow Jesus. Follow his earthly ministry. Do the things that Jesus Christ's gospel of the kingdom message and ministry tell you to do. They promote that. They'll promote parts of Romans through Philemon, but they'll say it's all a continuation of the ministry that the twelve apostles took on after Jesus Christ's ascension in the gospel of the kingdom. They will tell you it's all the same. They have been deceiving you since your conception into whatever church it is you go to, whatever preacher it is you listen to whatever Christian or religious organization you belong to. That's what they have been doing to you. So you have been, been set up by Satan with the influence of man to be deceived, believing you are getting the truth. But in all reality, you are not getting the truth because you believe what man is telling you to believe. You are blinded by Satan. And please, it's not something that is new. That is in Scripture. Open your Bibles, ladies and gentlemen. Timothy chapter, 2 Timothy. Chapter 2. Let's go and start in verse 25. Verse 25 says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 now, In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure would give them the repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. It's talking about those that oppose themselves. They don't even know they're opposing themselves by believing the lie that they already have been told by man. And verse 26 says, And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. But let's not stop there. Can you continue back in your Bibles now to 2 Corinthians, ladies and gentlemen, and go to chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 3. Verse 3 says, But if our gospel be hid, now this is the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that Jesus Christ gave by personal revelation to Paul the Apostle to give to, to you and to me, found in Romans through Philemon, which is specifically found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. That is the gospel that is being presented right here and mentioned. This is the truth that one deceives and one does not want to believe. But he says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. This is God's word, not mine. Verse 4, in whom the God, small g now, is Satan of this world, has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. That's how why it's going to be so easy for God to send them a strong delusion that they are going to believe a lie. They're being programmed. You're being programmed up until this very moment to believe a lie. Did you ever realize that? Now, what is this great delusion? Now, this great delusion is going to be found in the book of Revelation. You see, those that are left behind are left behind for a reason. And it was just explained as to why, because they did not want to receive the love of the truth, the gospel of salvation that could save them during the age of grace here. 
just by believing by faith and faith alone the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ. It's too easy. They'd rather join a church, they'd rather do a lot of other things, or just simply not believe in it at all. Call it whatever they want. So they're going to believe something. They're not going to have control over this belief because it's going to come from God. It's going to come from the infinite wisdom, infinite mind, and power of God. They're not going to be able to escape it. Now, if you take your Bibles, and if you open it up to the book of Revelation, the book of Revelation, let's go to chapter 13, I think is a good place to start. Here is the great delusion and lie God is going to give to those left behind. Let's start in verse oh, 14. We're talking about a second beast here. There is really the first beast. But in verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. The signs and miracles and wonders from heaven that this beast had performed, which he had the power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth now, that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword, and did live. Verse 15, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Verse 16, And he caused us all, not just one or two of the left behind, all of the left behind, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Verse 17, And that no man may buy or sell, say he that hath the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. This great delusion and lie is going to come down and be permitted of God. Because these people fail to have a love of the truth that they came that they could have been saved by just believing the gospel that Paul the Apostle preaches. By faith and faith alone, no works. They refused to believe that. They wanted to work for their salvation. Or they didn't want to do anything at all. They didn't want to believe in any of it at all. They were just atheists. They were just, this was all a bunch of junk. That's the ones he's talking about here. And this great delusion is not going to be that difficult because it's the same delusion it's not the great lie, <coughs> excuse me, that Satan used in Genesis chapter 3. Don't get it confused with that one. That one's coming later. But this great delusion is the one that's been building since the cross by Satan. Satan was defeated at the cross. He knows that. But he's banking on you so you do not get into the Word of God. You don't study the Word of God rightly divided as you're commanded. You're not a workman. You don't want to be approved of God, so you're not going to spend a lot of time studying the Word of God. That's what Satan is banking on. That you're going to believe that Satan isn't defeated. You're going to believe there's still that chance that he can thwart you. And he does by using modern teachings, by using pastors, by using teachers, by using Christian, religious, denominational, non-denominational centers to teach you false teaching and wrong doctrine. Let's make law and grace. Let's make it all one. Let's not believe that there's something going to be caught up called the rapture. Let's denounce that. Let's denounce the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ from Romans to Philemon for the age of grace, for the doctrine, for the body of Christ. No, no, let's denounce that. Let's make it all for the body of Christ doctrine. Not only Romans to Philemon, but Genesis to Revelation. Let's make it all work. They're going to tell you the Bible is for you and to you. From Genesis to Revelation. The Word of God tells you if you rightly divide the Word of Truth and study to show yourselves approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, you'll know that the Bible is all for us. Yes, but it is not all to us. It's Romans through Philemon that is to us for our doctrine, for the doctrine of the body of Christ, for our salvation. That's what this all boils down to. Now, the great delusion that they're going to believe is this. They're going to believe their way to salvation is to take the mark of the beast. 
because they've been set up all this time to believe the lie of man and Satan. So it's going to be very easy for God to bring in a strong delusion for them to cause to believe this lie that the beast, the mark of the beast. And why? Because you take somebody that has a family, whether it's the male or the female's head of the family, and they have children. What do you think that's going to look like to the societies of this time coming if somebody starves out their children on purpose to denounce what everybody is coming to? All are coming to receive the mark of the beast, and yet you're going to stand back and you're going to starve and let your children die because you fail to believe what the beast is telling you. He is the false Jesus Christ. He is the one for your salvation. You're not going to deny that. You're going to run to it because you want to be accepted of the one beast now that you can see, you can hear, and you can look at and talk to. And all the people around you, you are seeing the advantages they have by taking the mark of the beast. They can feed their children. They're not going to be hungry. They can buy and sell. They can be productive within the world as it looks at that time. That's going to be a salvation. Because it's going to refer back to what uh, Jesus Christ was teaching his apostles. In Matthew, when he said, What good is it that thou shalt inherit the earth and lose thy soul? Because he says, Those that, lose their, that gain their lives or save their lives will lose it. But those that lose their life for my sake will save it. That's what he's talking about here. He's talking about, he's warning the, the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles in the gospel of the kingdom now. Don't do it. Because that's what's happening. The people that take the mark of the beast are going to save their lives in that time. But in the end, they're going to lose their lives. They're going to gain the world and lose their soul. That is the great delusion that God is going to send them. So whatever the beast in the book of Revelation tells people, they will follow him because they're given over to the strong delusion from God. That is what's going to be the bad news for these people. They can never come out of it. They will end up in the lake of fire because they took the mark of the beast. Once the mark of the beast is there, there's no turning back. But they aren't going to know that because all this time they've been set up by Satan and by man in their denominations, their non-denominations, their religious and Christian organizations where man tells you what it is you need to believe for your salvation. They know, don't listen to God, don't read into God's word and see exactly what it is God's word says from God. Don't do that. This can't be true. It's too simple to just believe. We've got to mix everything together to get you ready. Now, those people that die in this age without believing solely on the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Revelation mystery, by faith and faith alone, nothing else, don't die in Christ. They're already in hell waiting the great white throne judgment and the lake of fire. The ones that are going to follow them are the ones that are going to be left behind once the rapture comes, which they will denounce. There's books written on it. They will use scripture to denounce the rapture, the being caught up, which is in the Bible in Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses starting in verse, or excuse me, first, chapter 4, starting in verse 13 through 18. It's also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Starting in verse 50, it's in the scripture, and it's found only, this is the key, it's found only in the writings of Paul the Apostle, from Romans to Philemon, the revelation of the mystery that Jesus Christ gave to Paul personally, by personal revelation. Paul was not taught this by man. He was taught this by Jesus Christ, by personal revelation. Jesus Christ chose Paul personally to come to you and me, present what Jesus Christ wants us to believe through Paul. Remember what he said in, in uh, John chapter 13, verse 20. If you receive the one that I sent, I also will receive you. He sent Paul. 
That's the one we listen to. That's the one we follow as he follows Jesus Christ. We are following Jesus Christ through Paul. And we believe on the gospel of Jesus Christ for our salvation. We believe fully in the doctrine from Romans through Philemon for the doctrine of the body of Christ, which includes being caught up and taken out of this world and not suffering through the great tribulation. So the good news for us is we can know about this delusion and great lie and why it's being given. But we're not going to be a part of it. With that love we should have, we should tell others, please, while you still have the chance, come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe the gospel that can save you by simply believing it by faith and faith alone the finished work of the cross. And you'll never have that delusion. You won't have to worry about this. They say we are, we are going to go through the Great Tribulation because Paul wrote about it. Paul didn't write about the Great Tribulation. He wrote about the part being set up in 2 Thessalonians. The whole reason the book of 2 Thessalonians was written was because there was false teachers of the time that came in and told these people from Thessalonica that the rapture was already done. They missed it. They were concerned. Paul comes back and says, no, no, these are the things that have to happen. And we will be gone before they do. Remember, I told you this when I was with you before, but he repeats it. That's why it's written there. That's the only reason, because God said he will not suffer us to his wrath. And that's what that means. If we're not going to suffer the wrath of God, the day of vengeance of the Lord, which is even after the Great Tribulation, we're not going to go through the Great Tribulation. There's the seven chumps of God that some denominations, non-denominations, and preachers and teachers teach that that's what the seventh trump is that Paul's talking about when he says a chump of God in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Now, no, ladies and gentlemen, they're putting that in there. It doesn't say that. It says a chump of God. You leave God's word alone where he wrote it, when he wrote it, to whom he wrote it to, and you leave it there. It's the same way with the great delusion. That is for those that are lost, for those that fail to believe in this, this great dispensation that we are in called the grace of God. It's scriptural. You can find that in Ephesians. This is the time of grace. This is the time you've come to Jesus Christ just by simply believing, and you'll never have to worry about ending up in the lake of fire because you, God had to give you strong delusion to believe a lie. What is that gospel that can save you? The gospel that can save us, the gospel that saved us is really the good news we know about. But to those that are lost, to you that have not, to you that believe what it is man tells you to believe, to you that think you have salvation but are a lost believer. And I'm going to do a video on lost believers. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to open your eyes. But you that are lost believers, you that believe, you that belong to a church, you that proclaim you're a Christian, you that go to a church and attend a worship every Sunday, a mass or whatever you want to call it, Saturday or Sunday, and you proclaim to be members of the body of Christ and claim to be saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, but yet you do all these other things and mix law and grace together. This message is for you. Because if you keep doing that, Without challenging man, you will end up in the lake of fire because of your false salvation. The true salvation that you can have, where you'll never be turned over to the delusion God's going to send for people to believe a great lie, is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. And it states, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which you have received, which I preached unto you, and which wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that which I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, for I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again for a third day, according to the scriptures. It's that simple. Do you believe on that by faith and faith alone? No works. Don't put yourself anywhere near works. Don't even think about works. All the work was done at the cross. You have to believe all of this by faith because this is spiritual. Now, 
before we finish, why do you think it was so easy for God to send this delusion? If you paid attention to the delusion that scripture showed you and the delusion that you've been receiving since your conception into whatever church it is you go to was all physical. Did you pick up on that at all? That's why it's going to be so easy for that delusion that is all physical in the book of Revelation and it's going to be presented to you in the strong delusion because you still cannot believe it by faith and faith alone. You have to have the physical. You have to be in the flesh, the satisfying of the flesh. That is going to be the downfall of so many, many, many people. Because if you didn't realize throughout this presentation that the great delusion that you've been given by man since the cross until now has been physical, that is what's going to be so easy. God is going to give you the delusion to believe the physical lie of the beast because you can see the beast you've seen the miracle signs and wonders you think salvation comes by taking a mark which is physical it's not a spiritual mark it cannot be you think about that for a minute all of us that take this by faith all of us by faith and faith alone because it is spiritual we will have eternal life with Jesus Christ and we will be caught up away from all this. We'll never have to worry about the great delusion that's coming from God that we're going to believe a lie. Because guess what? We believe the truth now. You believe the truth. What is the truth? We establish in the books from Romans to Philemon. 49 times it is mentioned in these books is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, as one old fellow used to say, and thou shalt be saved. And that's true. Don't believe a lie. Don't wait for the great delusion from God. You'll never escape believing that lie. Because God doesn't lie. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. It's so a home Bible study. From my home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thanking you. And always remember. Until next time. <laughs>